thought I would demonstrate how to get started on your master analysis project. So the first thing I did was I found an image that was interesting to me and I printed it out. You can print it out or even better, you could set up your computer and just have it on the screen. Printing it out, sometimes you lose resolution, but to start it, I'm gonna start with this printed out image um, because I'm starting gesturally and I will be working from general to specific. So then what I can do is, I'm not gonna make a grid, but what I can do is, is kind of try to see where, you know, the halfway mark on the image is. You know, I think her knee is about halfway up, maybe a little less than halfway from the bottom, splitting the, the picture plane in two. So I think, I'm thinking her knee's gonna be somewhere around here, um, a little bit less than halfway. Her head will be up here. And then I'm also seeing that her knee is here. So I'm gonna start to gesture out really lightly what I see. And of course I'm drawing bigger than on my image, so I have to keep that scale change in mind while I'm drawing too. So um, I'm seeing that her hips look pretty straight across, but when I look at her shoulders, there's an angle like that. Her right side shoulder is higher than her shoulder that's behind and her torso is leaning over this way okay so these are all the beginning gestural cues that I want to look for actually I think this hip is high and this one's low now that I look more closely there's a slight lean and then those shoulders the one on the right hand side is higher and then her head is kind of balancing and looking slightly down okay so so I'm seeing something like this. Now, I do want to fit her hair on the page, so I'm gonna keep adjusting and try to uh, place her head so that I can include her hair, which will be up here. And her shoulders are very close to her chin, so that means I'm looking up at her. Um, so there's a real foreshortening going on over here that I'm gonna have to be aware of. Her head is gonna drop down and then her neck is really placed low into the torso. I wanna come back to what's closest to me because I always do that in foreshortening. I tend to wanna, I tend to wanna start with what's closest to me. And I always make everything bigger than it, than it is and then I have to scale back. But the good thing about working from a drawing is, you know, the model's not gonna move. <laughs> so it's a little bit easier, actually. So I'm seeing like the center line of where her, her uh, the margin of the belly is and the belly button, and I'm running up the linea alba to the breastbone. Okay. And I see her elbow here coming up to her her chin and her hand turning. So all of this is very loose. And then I'm looking at the foreshortening on that other leg and I see the relationship between the knees. One is higher than the other and one is directly a little bit to the left, closer to her knee than to her pubic area. Seeing a hip here. And then running up. And then that odd shape where I can see just a little bit of the underside of the thigh. And then her other leg is tucking back under this foot. The foreshortening is, is really interesting. So her leg tucks back in there. Now I feel like I'm getting too big as I go up. So I'm gonna adjust. Um, still want my proportions to work and that's why I'm staying loose and then she's leaning over remember I said she was slightly leaning to the side so I'm seeing this part of her and then I get to her her rib cage and then the breast is going to be over a little more and then I'm seeing so I tend to follow what I can see this contour to the side of the breast to the armpit over here and then when I look over here and go straight up, I see, if I do an imaginary line straight up, I can see her shoulder is very, very high 
somewhere over there, okay, somewhere in over here, and then her face is probably going to be smaller, okay, and that's fine. I kind of draw a line for the line of the eyes, a line for the mouth, kind of a triangle for where the face is. This is where the hand is. The hand actually looks very big compared to her face. Um, and then I'm modifying this, okay. Now I want her shoulders, this is the high shoulder, and this arm is straight. Wrist is right at, her, at the shadow of her thigh, and that hand is just gently opening um, with the thumb on top. But I'm just going to do it roughly because this is just the beginning. And then, and then here, and then the inside of the arm is here, the inside of the elbow. And now I want to make sure this shoulder, this high shoulder, connects with this one over here. And I think this one has to come in more. And it's also showing the top of itself towards me. So it drops down a little lower. Um, and there's a little, it's peeking out of there a little less. And then the arm comes down and around up. I think that's too low. So as I get back, you know, and I work this, I start to really refine it. Um, I'll get more of that detail. I can see the side of her arm here a lot more clearly. Running up to the biceps, and that shoulder is just back a tad more. Okay, something like that, something like that. The face, I think, needs to come over a little bit. The ear is going to be back in here. And then this thing that's holding her hair is up here. Okay, and then this side, this breast is hidden, but I always draw through, okay? Okay, so now I can actually sit here and, you know, if I had wanted to, I could have placed these things that she's sitting on. There's going to be drapery under her hand. I love drapery. It's one of the fun uh, things to draw. It's pretty simple. Once you get the hang of it, it just takes a little bit of practice. And it's curving around there. And then I think that this is going to run into this form all the way to the edge. And then this is in perspective, right? So linear perspective. And then this is flush. So this is one point perspective that's happening in the objects here. And uh, it doesn't quite go up to her shoulder. So I can use those. You know, maybe it's going to be over a tad bit. I may need to reduce the size of her, but she's very close to the knee, is very close to that line. Maybe it's here, here. Maybe this is not as long. Whoops, it go right to the corner. I may be able to fit it or I might be able to. And then it looks like this is an odd, it looks like the top of this box is going above my head and behind her. So it's gonna go back there. And then behind her, is all this soft value. So I can start to I can start to darken behind her a little bit, but I'm not gonna go too crazy because I'm actually gonna want to use the darkness back there to um, contrast and to like lose the line in places. And I see that it's darker closer to the bottom. It's darker in between here, in between her arm and her body. And then this drapery comes up high, comes out that way, and then it's and then it's not so dark on this side. Okay. But kind of goes all around like this. And I'll darken where her hair is gonna go, because I'm gonna do a lot of erasing probably with her hair. Okay. So I can blend this with a chamois, makes it go a lot faster, softens it quite a lot. Okay, so I have something like this, and to me this is a very good start. 